Now, within the last hour, a new type of local TV service is launched in Brighton and Hove, promising dedicated local news for the city called Latest TV. It is supported by the government and funded in part by the BBC. Now, there are more of these services planned to follow across the country, including in Maidstone and in Tunbridge. Uh, John Young is in Brighton for us now. And, John, they've set themselves quite a task, haven't they? They certainly have, Rob, going on air 24 hours a day, seven days a week. As you mentioned, five other services in the country already broadcasting on Freeview Channel 8. Something coming up for West Kent, but today it was the turn of Brighton to go live. Two, one, rolling the music. Coming to They've been waiting two, four two, years for this moment. One. Thank you, you're live. A news and Welcome entertainment service based in a local club broadcast. with a studio My upstairs. Here are the news headlines for six o'clock. A newsroom downstairs that turns back into a bar by night. So we need to make sure that that happens today. And this afternoon, a team you sensed just wanted to get on air. On the sports desk... Very positive, very positive. We've got some real, real good stuff to show everyone, and uh, we're very proud of it. And in the edit suite... Very excited, actually. There's a real buzz around the place, and, uh, you know, it's been a long time coming. We've been doing stuff online for years, and once we got the licence, we've just been building up for this day, really. In a city like Brighton, soundproofing near a studio can be an issue. Just another problem, though, for a team that says it understands the problems local businesses face. It's important because local businesses need a, a greater outlet to present their services and products on TV in an affordable way. And it's also important for um, producers in this city. And not just in this city. London and Grimsby are two of several that have launched already. Maidstone and Tunbridge are in the pipeline. But viewing figures, particularly in London, have not been encouraging. Well, the government idea is part of a wider localism agenda that the more local information there is, the more citizens will get engaged. The reality has been it's been very difficult to make news programmes. Actually, to get people to watch is turning out to be much more difficult than people hoped, uh, hoped it would be. It's not going to be for everyone, we're aware of that, but we feel as if there's a definite appetite in Brighton and Hove for local news, for local issues, for local entertainment, get local people on board. So this afternoon we put that to the test at the pub over the road, a sneak preview of what was coming up this evening. I think um, because the, the news coverage currently is quite broad, it is nice to see things that are actually happening in your own town um, and the personal stories like the, uh, the man who's unfortunately shops closing down after 50 years of trading, it's, uh, it's really interesting to hear those stories. So that's one happy viewer in the bag then. Lights out please. The presenters, producers and advertisers will be hoping the first of many. And it really will be all about the numbers. Evidence today showing what the challenge might be. Figures showed that the Argus, well-respected local newspaper in the city, has lost 13% uh, of its readership recently. Now, the producers of Latest TV will be hoping that's not because people don't want local news, but it's because perhaps they are shifting to getting their local news on the phone, on the web and, of course, on TV. OK, John, interesting times ahead. Thank you. Now, earlier in the programme,